everyone and welcome back to another episode of Columbia City. This is episode 21 and today we're going to be working in this area to the south of downtown by the freeway. We're going to be building a, a, a Greyhound station. I almost said light rail station. That's what we did last episode. Uh, and we're going to be building just one block of commercial as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm actually really happy with how this episode turned out. We do a bunch of pretty unique stuff here uh, and it was it was fun. So first of all, I am placing a big parking garage next to the Greyhound station. I'm basing the Greyhound station off of the one in Seattle. If you look in Seattle, the Greyhound station is really nestled uh, under this um, highway overpass. Uh, it, it's really, really small actually. It, it's very packed in there. Mine's a little bit more spacious, but it's still like directly under the uh, highway viaduct. Uh, and it looks really cool uh, actually, like when the buses come in and um, and use it. So we're actually using the intercity uh, bus station from the new DLC. The actual asset doesn't look too bad, so I, I'm just using that. Uh, cause I actually didn't even scan the workshop for anything that's, um, functional with the DLC that, uh, that looks nice, but the actual asset itself, it looks cool. So I'm using that, um, and we're sort of working on this lot over here in an area that basically transitions from, like, this, this line right here where we're working is the transition from the commercial of downtown to a more industrial, um, zone, zoning um, pattern as we move towards the uh, the highway and it gets really industrial really fast um, and th this area specifically is just sort of that transition uh, if you can imagine so I feel like a Greyhound station is like really perfect for that uh, if you look at the like the Greyhound station in um, Seattle like where it is in relation to downtown it's actually pretty close to a lot of the um, the denser parts of downtown. It's, it's maybe a mile away, but uh, it, it's still like decently far away. Like it's it's not necessarily right next to um, lots of transit. I believe it's near one of the light rail stations. Yeah, it's, it's directly next to a light rail station, um, which actually might be what the parking garage is for, um, but I may be wrong. Um, yeah, but I, I did place a parking garage here nonetheless because it sort of makes sense for a big uh, inner city bus station in a big city like Columbia City to have a reasonable parking garage. It also gave me some surfaces to have some fun um, with, like where I just basically put graffiti all over the place here. I've got tons and tons of graffiti downloaded that I've wanted to use um, on a big surface for a while and I honestly just really got the chance here to go crazy with it. So I'm just placing it everywhere. There are also these like patched up areas where um, I guess the owners of the parking garage had to patch up previously applied graffiti. And um, yeah, it's uh, it, it looks really cool um, in the end here. Um, but yeah, like I, I th this area is an area that I haven't developed mostly at all yet. Like I, I did some industrial stuff under the under the uh, highway um, interchange. Other than that though, this area is not developed uh, and it's pretty close to downtown. So I want to get on that. Um, just like we, you know, we built that underground light rail station in the last episode um, in an area that really needed to be developed. This is an area that definitely needs to be developed as well. And I'm definitely excited to to develop it here so yeah the graffiti is sort of coming along I, I i just love how it looks it looks really cool i'm just trying to pile different um graffiti props on top of each other uh just so it looks like uh a, a little bit more natural and here i'm now working on the Greyhound Station again. If you've seen, I've I've been using procedural objects a little bit throughout the episode. I, I've been, yeah, I used it for that ploppable asphalt that you see on the left, um, and I I'll, I'll be using it more. I be, I be, yeah, I definitely will be using it more actually as the episode goes on. I'm sort of getting used to it, uh, and its basic functions um, in terms of like raising and lowering, you know, ploppable asphalt, for example. And I've actually found it really useful for those basic tasks. Uh, tasks that I um, that I was not able to do before without it. So I'm enjoying it so far. I'm definitely not an advanced PO user. I sort of don't want to be because I would detail way too much, uh, but it's, uh, it's definitely something I'd recommend trying, at least giving a shot for some of the more basic things you can do with it. 
definitely very useful, at least just for those, um, if, if nothing else. And then obviously you can make some insane stuff if you um, use it to its full potential, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, just too much detail for a city like Columbia City. Uh, here I'm placing that animated um, excavator uh, prop again, or it's actually a building, but it looks really cool. And I placed it uh, two episodes ago, and I just, I had to place it again here. I actually placed it once more in this episode as well. It's just such a cool asset. Um, here we're actually moving on to the second portion of the episode, which I believe is actually way longer than that first one. The first one is sort of the core of the episode where we build that Greyhound station, but the second one here I'm sort of experimenting with a bunch of terrain height differences and just trying to build a interesting little commercial block here. And uh, another thing I struggle with is these 45 degree angles um, are really hard to work with. You'll see later on in the episode, I end up placing a gas station at this corner because it just looks the best of anything I tried. Like, I tried to get this to work without the gas. It just didn't work quite right. Um, but once again, I'm just trying to transition from that commercial zoning there to something more industrial um, as we as we move towards like the Greyhound station and the interchange. So we got some like warehouses and stuff. And... Um, yeah, I'm also trying to transition density a little bit. Uh, the density will, like, it, it really needs to slow down a little bit here because we're, or at least the height uh, of the buildings, because we are moving, once again, towards the, the industrial area. So I'm trying to make these buildings, like, one or two stories. And that transitions from, like, three or four stories a couple blocks before. And we'll make that transition work. I still haven't detailed the area around here, but it's going to be a lot of fun to transition density. I, I'm also going to be redoing a bunch of the suburbs. Or not, like, not redoing them, but I'm going to be adding a bunch of buildings that aren't there already. Uh, in the suburbs, Like we're going to add um, some taller buildings to transition them. Because if you look at Seattle, the transition into the suburbs is not very abrupt. Uh, it's actually very gradual. And uh, I don't know if there's been a lot of upzoning recently, but uh, I do know that there's like the, the zoning um, mixtures are really interesting uh, in Seattle. But uh, it, it is obviously mostly single family. Like it, it's just for the most part, just lots and lots of single family uh, homes because, you know, it, it, it's a U.S. city in, in the West. But uh, the downtown area is really cool planning wise. So, yeah, it'll be really fun to work on those zoning transitions um, as we, and the, like the density transitions just generally as we transition from downtown into the suburbs. And then also from downtown into the more industrial area over here, like this entire part of the city is going to be extremely industrial. Uh, like in Seattle, if you look at the zoning, it's, it's very restrictive, like in the industrial um, areas to the south of downtown, it's just industry. Um, and then probably some sort of commercial, but like it's really just mostly industrial for the, the entire area. It's crazy actually. Um, and then the residential is sectioned off uh, to its own areas, which uh, I find really interesting. Um, actually, another thing that's sort of like this that, that, I, that I thought of, which is an even more um, extreme example is Toronto zoning and Canadian cities generally have a lot of this like very, very sharp contrast between residential and industrial areas. It's pretty crazy if you look at the suburbs of Toronto. Um, anyway, okay, let's hop back in game here. So we're working on this lot over here because I didn't really know what to put on this corner. I could have put some like one, 135 degree um, building here, but I decided instead to use the area here to build some sort of like parking lot that's under construction or something. Uh, so I placed a bunch of different props here. I placed some like dumpster props and I placed the animated excavator again. And then some like dump trucks and then some barriers at the entrance to the uh, lot here. And then a little bit of graffiti on the building itself. Just a bunch of different stuff because I, I, I want to make this lot sort of interesting. I used ploppable asphalt here and the retaining wall networks by Lost Gecko um, in order to make this area sort of rise above the um, the uh, grade below it. I also placed a billboard here because it sort of looks cool. I want to place more billboards in the city. I don't know how many billboards there are in Seattle, but um, I, I do know that they, they're definitely realistic for uh, areas that are a little bit more industrial, like this is transitioning into definitively industrial stuff here. Um, so we'll definitely be adding more billboards as we move on. 
And then here I'm adding some like different tanks and just random props. I'm actually placing a for sale sign here because I, I figure this property is for sale uh, to some degree. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm placing some decals here as well. It, it was sort of annoying to work with the Plopable Asphalt uh, as we moved towards the street, but you'll see a little later, I actually use uh, procedural objects again to make it work because this is sort of on a hill. Like the, the, the height differences here were really hard to work with, but also sort of fun. Uh, like in terms of, it really came out looking amazing. Uh, you'll see the cinematics this episode are extremely satisfying. They show this area in all of its glory on the uh, extreme, not even extreme, but just like really hard to work with height differences. So I had a lot of fun with that. Hopefully uh, you do as well. I definitely, as I mentioned last episode, recommend trying to uh, build in some, um, you know, hillier areas. It's a lot of fun. I placed some beams back there and then a truck with some graffiti on it and various stuff like that. Um, placing some trash props, just lots and lots of props everywhere. I, I noticed I, since I've removed more beautification, I haven't been detailing as much because it's harder to find specific types of props because you don't have those different menus. Uh, but I'm trying to go through my props and like tag them with find it um, tags, but also those tags seem to be getting deleted. I don't know why, but I will fix that and uh, I'll have you know, a collection of construction props that I've tagged and stuff like that, just so that I'm able to go back to them easily. Uh, and here, now is where I use procedural objects. So I basically placed this little piece of asphalt here and I stretched it to um, either end of the entrance. Um, and that was really nice because I was able to have it be a very specific shape. And you'll see a little later, I actually work with the height of that because you can actually make the ploppable asphalt be on a like a slope with procedural objects, which is something that I have really wanted to be able to do for a while, because normally you just have to use the poppable asphalt decals, which disappear when you zoom out, which is not too satisfying. So I decided, you know, let's try procedural objects here. I'm also trying to figure out other uses for procedural objects. I'm gonna slowly learn the mod and um, you'll see my development with that. But uh, I'm definitely enjoying it once again for its more basic uses. And here I'm working behind uh, on this uh, like lower, area uh, grade wise uh, I placed a mural back there um, looks pretty cool and then I placed a bunch of like like weeds and stuff there and then some dirt um, it was a little bit annoying to get terraform tool to work here the the network but I managed um, I was just having more trouble than usual and here we're placing a gas station I'm just trying to figure out which gas station to place here I end up needing to remove that um, that bookstore asset by King Leno which by the way I love that asset uh, the one that uh, you'll see me remove in a second. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I love that asset and I've actually used it elsewhere in the city. I placed it last episode uh, in the portion that I lost uh, footage from. Right here I'm lowering the poppable asphalt so that it's like at um, at grade and it looks really, and then I actually placed some poppable pavement uh, in order to further transition it. And being able to do that allows me to use poppable asphalt on these hills and just make everything look a lot more um, streamline and I, I really I really do love it like if you look at that it, it's actually smooth and then it, it looks good so yeah um, and then this gas station here I'm actually going to place a uh, in just a second I'll place a, a curb here uh, like a planter and then I'll place a big tree in it because I didn't really know what to do on this corner specifically but this actually makes sense like you'll see this a lot um, just a big planter with a tree in it I also wanted to add a little bit of greenery here because we don't have too much. We'll actually be placing some greenery along the sidewalk uh, on that sort of main street here um, in just a second. But um, I wanted to add some more because it's obviously a, you know, it's Pacific Northwest. It's a very green city, lots and lots of foliage. Uh, here I'm adding the planters here. Initially, I wasn't really sure what tree to add, but I ended up just adding the younger London plane trees just because those are the trees that I've been adding for uh, like on the rest of the um, on the rest of the street here. This is the extension of that huge uh, light rail avenue that goes through downtown. So I added the London plane trees there. And um, yeah, I, I, I basically am finished with uh, this build for, for this episode. I, I had a lot of fun building this. Uh, let's hop in game now because I want to show you what we built, uh, where it is in the city. And uh, yeah, let's, let's hop in game. All right, we are in game. That's a fast police car. 
Uh, let's take a look at what we built this episode. Here is the Greyhound station. There is a Greyhound bus stopping at the station very abruptly. Um, and then turning around very abruptly as well. That's a nice dog. Look at the dog. Why is the dog getting on the bus? What? Whatever. Um, so we're gonna take a look. Let's see. So this is where we're building. Oh wait. Oh, I just downloaded these trolley buses by Ninja Noob Slayer. I changed the trolley bus line over to being an actual trolley bus line, and it looks better now. Oh wait, I forgot to disable the. Um, wait, I have to do that. Let's go into the transit menu and disable the normal buses on this line select types just the new flyer um and then the xt60 is not out yet because apparently it's like hard to make trolley buses with trailers um hopefully modders are able to figure that out we'll see but for now we have these beautiful new flyer xt40s um where are they over here wait ah the sun is going down that's not good let's fix that And we can watch the, the trolley buses go. That's not good. Uh, yeah, nice. And the Greyhound, uh, if you look at the Greyhound uh, route uh, that the buses take, because if you click this, you can look at the... Um, traffic routes so they seem to come around from that end obviously because th these are actual inner city buses and then they come from here and then they go up on this viaduct here which is really cool like look at this that's cool i just like the cars generally on this viaduct um, it's terrible planning, but, like, it looks cool. The monorail. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, enjoying the city, uh, if you couldn't tell already. Look at that. Alright, um, yeah, let's actually go back here. So, the, um... The Greyhound station here under the uh, interchange looks really cool. It doesn't have like a Greyhound logo anywhere on it. I don't know if that exists in the workshop, but um, the buses definitely stop here and they stop at all of the different platforms and ah, it's so cool. I honestly love it. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. And then we have this parking garage here with lots of cool graffiti on it. Um, Pretty awesome vibes from here, and we haven't actually detailed this area here yet, so just ignore that. Um, oh, I have to fix that so people can actually get into the parking garage. I'll do that another time. But yeah, look at that. Lots of, lots of cool vibes here. I could actually cover up that entrance over there, because it's... Not exactly the entrance I want people to come in through. I want them to come up, like, up here. Whatever. That is fine. Um, yeah, cool Greyhound station. And then over here we have this, like... I don't, I don't know what this is. <laughs> like, some weird hippie shop in a shed. I, I like it. I love the asset. I think Die Hard Hunter made that. Um, then we have this like weird sort of commercial building of some sort here. Ignore the fact that this is sunken down into the ground. You can't really see it from above. Uh, we've got a gas station here, which looks pretty cool on this corner. And this is that main avenue. Um, we have a nightclub by King Leno. We have an Urban Outfitters for some reason. I just like the asset. And then this is what I was talking about with P.O. Ignore the bench, but like otherwise, this looks pretty good. Uh, like it transitions perfectly, even though this is this is this is ploppable asphalt and ploppable pavement on a slope, and it works fine. Um, 
And then this is the construction site right here. Which, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving these street level, like, views that I've been able to get in the, uh, live play. Just hanging around on street level. It's a lot of fun. But look at that. Like, even when my frame rate gets really, like, right now I'm getting 20 FPS. It's pretty, pretty okay. Um, but, yeah, look at that. Cool stuff. And then we have, yeah, it's, wait, I haven't detailed that. I gotta fix that. Anyway. Bunch of stuff we built. Um, mostly, I just really like the um, the height differences. My favorite view of everything is like from over here. Like that view is really awesome, especially with like a lower FOV, like you'll see in the uh, cinematics in just a second. Definitely like it. Uh, I also like this billboard. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of a lot of stuff to do in this in this series. Um, one of those things is to build an actual nuclear power plant to power the city. Um, we're probably gonna build it. I don't know, somewhere, maybe over there, who knows, uh, but we're going to use the dual nuclear power plant assets at some point uh, to build a nice nuclear power plant, because there's a little bit of nuclear in the Pacific Northwest. I believe a lot of the Pacific Northwest power does come from hydroelectric, though, so we're going to have to probably build a dam at some point. Um, I'd like to make this a larger river and then build a dam here. I feel like that could be fun. Like, if we widen this river, um, and... Yeah, like build a dam like right here. I feel like that could be a pretty fun project, but uh, that is definitely for another time um, We're barely even expanding at all here, but uh, we're definitely making progress like downtown is gonna be it's like the hardest part of the city to build and it's Basically, I mean look at the detail like it's it's very detailed now uh, We have a trolley bus line with the actual trolley buses from the DLC now um, people are using the parking lots, which like look at that. It's all filled up. That is so satisfying That is really satisfying um, Yeah, I, I I love the vibes in the city now. All right, uh, that's basically it. Let's uh, let's see where, where, should, where should we go to end the episode up? I'm gonna know I'm gonna go down to the waterfront. That'll be fun. We'll do that um, There we go cool vibes uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode, uh, that's not realistic, ignore that. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed, if you did, uh, make sure to leave a like, helps out a ton, uh, helps new people find the channel, because YouTube promotes the video in its algorithms, and, you know, it's a nice thing to do. So if you enjoyed, please leave a like, uh, you can subscribe if you are new around here, uh, hit the bell icon and next to the subscribe button to get notified whenever I upload a video so you never miss an upload. Um, and then you could uh, support me on Patreon. Uh, that's definitely highly appreciated. And uh, if you do, you might be able to go get access to the save game for Columbia City or New Windsor. Or you could um, go over there and get videos early. Um, you could get your name in the credits. Or all three. Um, definitely up to you and the support's definitely appreciated. So, yeah. Uh, what else? You could... Follow me on Twitter, uh, I post updates over there, I let you know when a video is premiering, which by the way, every video I've been uploading recently has been premiering live, so you see it, and I can you can chat with me in the chat when it goes up, so that's another reason to have the bell on, uh, the bell on uh, with your subscription. Um, wow, look at that. That's cool. That is cool. Anyway, uh, follow me on Instagram for photorealistic screenshots like this. I'm actually going to take a screenshot of this. Look at, look at that. That is, that is glorious. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a screenshot right there, and I'm gonna post that to Instagram. Um, that's the kind of stuff you get over there, so definitely follow me there. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. I, I sure did. Look at all those people using the bike lane. That's so awesome. I, getting hit by a box truck, nice. Um, uh, yeah, look at that. Ah, I love it. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you enjoyed the cinematics. I uh, I think the cinematics are pretty awesome this episode. So hopefully you do as well. And um, I will see you in the next episode.